welcome to another video on uh, power supplies on this video it's a follow-up to the last video that I did where I used a uh, venable frequency response analyzer uh, some of the comments that I got was that uh, not too many people can afford to buy a $15,000 to $30,000 uh, frequency response meter which is a very valid uh, comment so in this video I'm going to show where you can use a function generator uh, the one that I'm using here is the RIGO DG4062 and you can also use uh, the uh, oscilloscope uh, the oscilloscope that I'm using is the Agilent DSO3024A and uh, <coughs> and also you would uh, to perform the the stability analysis or to measure the face the face margin and the gain margin you would need to uh, construct a injection transformer in this case I'm using a this little box as my injection transform uh, box in here I have a transformer it's a P core I believe it's a 4229 P core and uh, and also uh, some more information on that now here's the power supply this is the power supply that I used in the last video okay. uh, the model number of that is the DPS here it's a TPS 55340 EVM it's a 5 volt regulator it has an input voltage of 8 to 24 5 volts and can handle up to 2.5 amps so on the data that they took they use a voltage or a current actually of 2.5 amps so here I have my electronic load I'm using two and a half amps that's basically what it's pulling and I have the input at basically 12 volts so that's my input so basically I have my my input being supplied with this supply and then my electronic load so those are connected okay now <coughs> now a little bit more information on the injection transformer okay. the injection transformer that I built is a P core it's a 4229 okay and here's a little schematic uh, I uh, some more information I use a 3C 91 it's ungapped so it has a a sub L of 11,500 um, nano Henry's. So if you know the turn series, you can calculate uh, the, the inductance. But I believe I ended up with uh, two Henry's. Uh, the primary I ended up turning or actually having 450 turns. And since I need a 10. 10 to 1 turn I made the secondary 45 turns okay. and then I put an electrolytic capacitor okay and then a wire goes to your test points okay now this re resistor is what I call a venable resistor and I'll show on the schematic of the power supply board where it hook up but so basically you hook up uh, a venable resistor and you inject uh, you connect your uh, primary your function generator so which is when I'm done do, done here basically this connection that BNC is connected to the output of my function generator okay and these two two test points are or actually these two test points these uh, banana plugs are coming out and then this is ground okay so you have your, like I said, your input, and then these are your scope connections. And basically, it's a wire 
you may be able to see in here. Basically, I have a wire connected from there to that test point, and I have a wire, the yellow, is connected from the BNC to the bana uh, banana plug on the opposite side, connected to the purple. Okay, so it's a very simple construction. It just makes it easier. Uh, you don't have to have two uh, scope probes connected. You can use just a single cable. Basically, this little cable that I have right here. It's a four wire with insulation, uh, uh, with a grounded uh, shield, and I only use three. So, like I said, you have your test points and your ground, and you connect it across a venable resistor, which is what I call the injection resistor. And basically, let me show where that venable resistor is. Here's the schematic, and typically, here's your output. Let me go ahead and point that out. Here's your output, and in your output, you will always have a feedback resistor. So here, I have the feedback resistors uh, uh, that are sampling the output voltage and then providing feedback for your control circuit. So in series with your sampling resistors, you will have another resistor that you would typically install in this case if you look in, in the schematic it says R3 is supposed to be 0 ohms but actually that's the test point that you want so what I did is I changed that 50 uh, from 0 I put a 50 ohm resistor so uh, the tens test points that I'm going to be using is TP2 and TP6 so by injecting a signal, a little wiggle, and then connecting scope 1 and then scope 2, you can measure the, the, the amplitude and the phase difference and therefore calculate what your uh, gain margin and phase margin is. Okay. So now that I have hopefully explained this, let me set up the scope. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Not sure if you can see, but uh, I have the frequency or the function generator at uh, one kilohertz, and I'm injecting 500 uh, millivolts peak to peak. Okay, so I have it enabled, and if you look at the position, this is better. Okay, here's the scope. Okay, now typically you want to get uh, if you you typically you want to sync your scope to your generator. Okay, so what you want to do is forgot to mention that the Rigel it has the terminal says or BNC that says sync. Well, that sync you connect it to your third channel, which is right there. So that connection is that connection, okay? And basically, you're gonna get a waveform, a square wave a representation of the sine wave, okay? So these two, that that signal is your sync. And basically, you want to make sure that your scope is triggered to the sync function, which makes uh, the analysis or actually the data acquisition much much easier okay so I'm going to go ahead and if you expand in here you can notice that this is the noise that typically we have to deal with okay this are the switching uh, uh, frequencies and noise that is being generated by the switching power supply all switching power supplies have this type of noise and these are at about a uh, replication rate of about 300 kilohertz and which which makes it difficult to read low frequency uh, um, fre uh, low frequency uh, signals so one of the things that we have to do is to filter that out 
we do the go to the acquisition mode okay and on the acquisition mode we go to averaging okay so once we go into averaging let me go ahead and bring this down a little bit so you can see how it looks when it's being average okay okay here we have the signal and you can see it, you still have a little bit of noise but if you average it increase the average and you can see that it starts filtering up the signal and typically you want to get these with the same uh, scale okay so now we can tell that uh, we can see our injection signal now I'm going to go ahead and increase the frequency until they're both equal and right now you can tell that uh, one the yellow signal has about six seven millivolts and the green one has about 47 millivolts and it's got a phase difference of 65 so that 65 and the frequency is uh, one kilohertz so I'm going to go ahead and increase the frequency until they're both equal and as I am up to four kilohertz okay and actually I've already done this measurement uh, at uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set it at 6.2 and it's trying to average out but if I do this kind of resets it okay so now I can see that both of my signals are correct or actually they're equal so okay let me see if I can explain this a little bit more okay so basically at that signal basically at 6.2 okay here's my uh, red it's the gain plot this is the plot that I took with the uh, venerable and at this point that's 0 dB okay 0 dB means that you have a gain of 1 okay so that means the signals are supposed to be equal so in this plot which is 6.2 kilohertz it shows that I have a phase margin of about 69 degrees okay and the bandwidth is 6.2 kilohertz so this is basically the graphical interpretation okay and if you don't have a FRA then this is the way you would use your uh, function generator and your scope so now we notice that the gain of both of them are equal so that's your 0 dB and I have a phase difference of approximately 63 uh, degrees which is pretty close uh, the venom will read 69 63 which is pretty good indeed okay so the other point of interest if you look in your on this uh, is this point this is the point where the phase is zero and the difference between here and here is called the gain margin okay so this is a gain margin okay and while this is called the phase margin the difference between here and here is the phase margin okay so the phase margin in this case was 69 degrees in this case if you look it looks like it's uh, about 13 negative 13 dB okay and this frequency is approximately 30 kilohertz okay so if I dial up the frequency to about 30 kilohertz okay let me dial it up Okay. Okay, there you go. 
go. If you notice now, the phase, they're both in phase. Okay, so that's good. So that means that's that's a zero phase crossing. So now what you can do is you can take basically the difference in the amplitude. Okay. Take the difference in the amplitude. Let's see if I can get that. Okay. Okay, I went ahead and turned on the statistical. That way I can get a little bit better reading. Okay, so the gain, the mean on one of them is 13.5 millivolts, and the gain or the amplitude on the other one is 48.4. Okay, so let me calculate what the gain is. So the lower one would be 20 log parentheses and it would be 13.6 divided by 48.6. Okay. So if we enter that into the calculator, okay, I get a gain margin of a negative 11.06. Okay, and uh, the venable per uh, measure 13, so that's pretty close. So in this case, with just by using a function generator, injection, and your scope, and then triggering it, and then using the average to null out the noise, you're able to get at least two critical pieces of information. You get the information uh, uh, of the bandwidth, you get the information of the phase margin that you have, and also the the, uh, the gain margin. So, by using this uh, configuration, these three pieces of tools, you can actually characterize your power supply, make sure that it's uh, a stable design, and uh, and you can vary it uh, under different loads. You can measure. Uh, if uh, uh, under different input voltages, different loads, and ensure that you have uh, a very stable uh, power supply. Thank you for watching.